So the vision of Daniel's Academy is to have a facility that we can take the boys into, a building where boys can be active uh, up in the mountains. So we're wanting to put in a gymnasium, you know, workout room, chapel set up, and you know, all the counseling, all the schooling that they need in one location so that they can come to get the healing they need and understand the value and the, the worth that God gave them. We named this facility Daniel Academy after the man Daniel in the Bible who showed governments that our God is the one true God. Daniel was a man of prayer, of purpose, of position, and of power. That's what we want to train these young men to do and to be. Boys are not generally uh, identified as victims in our society when it comes to sex trafficking or being molested. And oftentimes there's insensitive questions asked of the male population when they've been victimized. With the boys, the, the level of victimization is overlooked generally by our communities because they are not seen as victims and because people in general think that boys and young men are able to take care of themselves. A lot of people don't believe that boys are trafficked, but the fact is they are. I was, and many others like me are being trafficked as we, as I sit here and speak. And yes, it's happening to boys and girls, and it all needs to stop. So as a matter of fact, the very first set of legitimate obstacles that we hit was that very few people here in the States believe that it happened here. It was very hard to make solid connections with departments of health and human services, with child services, with systems of DAs all throughout our state. Um, every door we went to, every conversation we had, they said, we know this happens in other places. We also know it doesn't happen here. So the very first thing we had to do was to change minds and find people inside of the system who were willing to help us. And as a matter of fact, as a result of what Sarah's Home has done and what Daniel's Academy is getting ready to do, several of the systems have changed. Here in Colorado Springs, we actually now have a task force in the police department dedicated just to human trafficking because of some of the connections that we have with Sarah's home. We've built relationships with the FBI here in the state and they help us with a lot of the girls and we've built relationships with other organizations as well. So it was interesting that that was our first obstacle. Just nobody believed that it happened here because of our work and perseverance and track record. Actually, a lot of that has changed. God brought us to this property. We were driving by one day and we both felt that we were called to buy this property. During that process, um, we were connected with one of our friends who has an MBA and we hired him to find the need in sex trafficking. Yeah. Cliff did that mm -hmm. for us and he connected us with Vicki. When we met Vicki, we realized we're done. We have nothing to do. She's mastered it. She knows what we need for the kids. She knows how to work, she knows the programming. So she and I met and I came home and screamed to my husband, you cannot believe what God did. It's amazing and that's it. So he said, okay honey, what did God do? And we told him and he met Vicki's husband. And from there we just kept talking and talking and we said we have this space and it's our blessing that we were called to buy it, to share with whomever needed it. And next thing you know, they have 40 acres in back and they're here. So we're blessed to have them. But when you see the results of, of what people who've been through abuse, how that affects them for their life and their future, then you can really see how that the, the, the kids need to get out of that mindset. Oh my goodness, if I could snap my fingers and have something change in my life, in my sphere, it would be having 20 homes for sex trafficked teenage boys. There's homes for girls, but for boys. And I would have every graduate be full of the Holy Spirit and know God and know His direction and His plan for their life and go and spread the good news of what God has done in their lives. That's what I would do.